we uh, touched upon this a bit earlier in the program, but uh, let's do so again per our upcoming guest. Miguel Cardona is the education secretary. And um, he he's has a, no Rhodes Scholar, I can tell you that. No, he isn't. Uh, he had this to say about um, parents, effectively parents insinuating themselves into the operation of their kids' schools and sending the message that you're either on uh, his team or the bad team that's fighting against kids. He's on the good team fighting for kids. You know, I've been in education, uh, you know, about 25 years, um, not including the time I was in higher ed as a student. Uh, I've never seen it where it is now. There was civility. We could disagree. We could have healthy conversations um, around what's best for kids. I respect differences of opinion. I don't have too much respect for people that are misbehaving in public and then acting as if they know what's right for kids. Or people that have a problem when we're trying to provide some support to folks who are buried in debt and complain about a $10,000 support for thousands of their constituents but are okay taking over a million dollars in loan forgiveness themselves as an elected official. That hypocrisy, I, I want to call it out at the top of this conversation because there's a team that's fighting for kids and there's a team that's fighting against kids. Mm -hmm. oh. um, what is it, which team is the, the team that uh, wants to ki kids to have scholarships so they can go to schools where the rich and the politically connected send their kids? Um, which team is that? Is that team fighting for kids or fighting against kids? Miguel. Hmm. Confusing. Um. Which team is this? Which team is um, our next guest on, Kyla Posey? She filed a federal discrimination complaint a couple of years ago. We brought you this story when it first surfaced. Oh, yeah. This is the one of the most astounding stories I've heard um, as you span the country when it comes to K-12 through education and bad practices. Filed a federal discrimination complaint against Mary Lynn Elementary School in Atlanta, did Kyla Posey after learning her daughter had been placed in a class only for black students. The elementary school set up two classes for black students and six classes for white students. Uh, Kyla Posey's daughter, as I understand it, wanted to like take a particular teacher. She, she was told she can't have that teacher because that teacher teaches the white students. <laughs> and you're, you're in the black students. It, it, this is what you're... This is, I know. Is this pre-Brown v. Board of Education? Um so anyway, Kyla Posey, I, I, is she on the team fighting for kids or on the team fighting against kids? What would Miguel Cardona, wholly owned subsidiary of the teachers unions, have to say? I wonder. Um, you literally had segregation of kids by race going on in this Atlanta elementary school. It's astounding. But it's true. That was happening. And, and, it, and I understand the principal didn't pretend it wasn't happening. They defended the practice. Provides more opportunity. A, a elementary school principal in Atlanta just overturned Brown v. Board of Education. We're back in Plessy v. Ferguson days at this Atlanta elementary school. Can you believe this? And what are we doing about it? Uh, Kyla Posey is doing a lot about it. She joins us now. She's the mother who filed a federal discrimination complaint against Maryland Elementary School. And she joins us at this juncture. Kyla, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me here. So, um, yeah. So uh, just tell us, I guess, how your daughter's doing and where things stand with the school and your litigation. Sure. So um, this has been a long journey for my family. Um, it's been long and hard. Um, it's emotional to think that we're having conversations about segregation in 2023. Um, the this conversation started because the principal had, there were probably about, the school that we attend is predominantly white. Um, There's maybe about 12 kids that were um, black in her secondary class and um, the, as a whole, the second grade. And um, the principal decided to take all of those 
those 12 students and place them in two of the six classes, not allowing them to be in the, to be placed in the other classes. Um, if you were white or of any other descent, you could be placed in any of the six classes. But if you were black, um, you only had two options, which was a huge problem for me. Um, a, it's not right. B, um, my, my children should have the same rights as everyone else in that school and the same access as everyone in that school. And that was denied by that principal. And your daughter uh, wanted a different teacher, right? She didn't want to be in that class with that particular teacher. So, correct. My husband at the time worked for the school. He um, was the school psychologist. And this principal had allowed um, staff to select teachers. Um, most principals in schools, they do have that same policy. I've worked in the school district um, and been a teacher before for over, you know, 20 some years. And that's always been the case. So I didn't think anything, you know, I didn't think anything of it when she allowed that practice to, for staff to select. Um, so I did, um, I did most of the legwork for, you know, our family and placement. And we thought that this particular teacher um, would be a better fit for our daughter educationally. And apparently that was not one of the teachers that she had selected as what she called the black classes. Um, I, I, I don't understand. So she she argued the principal I'm talking about now, who is also black, black right? Yeah. That uh, is correct. So she argued this would provide more opportunities for black students. How? That was my question. And what was her what answer? Was answer? Her, she said that it built community. And I said, that's not your job. Um, as a parent, it's my job to to provide them with a stable community. They have cousins. They have a black experience, so to speak, in our household. Um, we, we teach our daughters to be friends with everyone, no matter race, creed, color, whatever. You be kind to everyone. And also, we want them to understand that there may come a time where they may be the only black person at the table. And that's okay. And people need to be comfortable with that. Shutting them into a room is not okay. And now, did it's the, creating it. Yeah, no, go on. I'm sorry. I didn't turn the interrupt. I was just saying that it creates an environment that people don't have to deal with black children. Yeah, right. Um, no. It's really unfortunate. Yeah. You mentioned that your husband works at the school. Did they run this by him or other administrators before doing this? Um, no, they didn't. Apparently, the the administrative team was aware of this practice, and they just went along with it. Um, <laughs> no one challenged her. It's just astounding. Um, no I, I just what I, year is this? I mean, really? I, I, no, no one, no one, no one said. God, no one said. Hey, are we sure that segregating kids by race is a good idea? Didn't we have experience in this country doing that before? That was bad, wasn't it? Or am I misremembering okay. our history? Um, what, what did we asked that question to the assistant principal, and her response was that she was aware that it was happening, and that was the principal's decision. And and she is also black. Which was mind blowing. And 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 what about the other parents? I mean, the, the uh, black, black and white students alike. Did anyone? I mean, when they, especially when word got out about this, did did you have parents rallying uh, around your initiative to stop this practice? It was interesting. We there were quite a few parents um, that did rally in support, and then there were parents that thought it was totally okay because um, she, they felt like she was a good principal. And I explained to them, this has nothing to do with, you know, or she's a good person. And I said, this has nothing to do with whether or not she's a good person or not, or whether I like her. It's against the law. Right. That's full right. stop. Right. So it didn't matter. So um, I, I don't, I mean, I, I just, I, I'm just having a hard time understanding how people don't look at this and say, are, are we back in the Jim Crow South? Is this what we want to do? And you're just going to paper it. You're sort of going to dress it up as this is providing more opportunity. I know we want society to be integrated. As you just said, we want everybody to have equal rights, equal access and chart their own course, parents involved. And, and this is just this is just uh, just lunacy. I, I just I'm surprised this hasn't gotten more notoriety, frankly. I mean, it was quite alarming for us. Um, 
after we reported her and, and the other piece, you know, we were working with the district. We had notified them at least, I would say, maybe a year to a year and a half before we even filed um, with um, the Department of Ed. So we had kind of, we were trying to work with the school district and telling them, hey, this isn't right. You know, what can you do? This needs to stop. Um, and the district could not, um, they just couldn't get the principal under control. She kept retaliating. Um, she was trying to move my husband's office. She would, uh, she tried to cancel my contracts. I'm an after school provider. That was one of my schools. She tried to cancel my contract. She had another principal cancel my contract. It was so much retaliation going on. Um, and then at that point, I was like, listen, you know, we've been sitting here quiet, allowing you to work through this. And she continues to do all of these things. Like, you know, she's not just going to keep beating up on my family. And at that point, we felt like we didn't have a choice but to file. Um, so then when we filed, it became worse. Mm. Um, they started to retaliate against my daughter. There, were, there was a teacher um, saying really mean and cruel things to my daughter about me. Um, my one of my daughter got injured by another student. Um, and they didn't do any, um, they didn't do an incident report. Mm. She told me she didn't feel that she needed to. Uh, um, they never report. investigated it. Yeah. To this day, that happened over a year ago. I've yet to receive an investigative report from the district. So people, you know, have jumped to her, um, you know, just it, her praise. And the reality of the situation is people don't know half of the story. So what you've seen in the news reports, that's probably only a quarter of the, the turmoil our family has had been put through and had to go through. Well, I was going to ask you how your daughters are doing and have they been, are, you, are they still enrolled at that school? Um, we took our girls out this current school year. Our um, school got, our neighborhood was rezoned due to um, overcrowding and yeah. we were rezoned to another school. And because we had completely lost faith in the district and them being fair and impartial to our daughters um, and b given the, the incidents with staff um, that they had not followed up on, we didn't feel like it was a safe environment. Um, you know, it's sad when your, your fourth grader comes home and says, she, um, or, or she's now in the fifth grade, her, um, she's at a different school and her, the, like the first day of school, I asked her, you know, how do you like your new school? Um, you know, is it working for you? Did you feel comfortable? And she said, mommy, you know, for once I felt like I went to school and the teachers were going to be nice to me oh. were her exact words, which breaks your heart. Yeah. Um, I, I, just, I mean, and, and, uh, school, I mean, I, I assume the Atlanta school system is probably run similar to Chicago where, You've got mayoral control of the school system. And so and if that's true, so any response from any politicians, the city council, uh, legislators, local uh, mayor's office, local school board members, whether appointed or elected? I mean, any, anybody saying anything about this other than you? The mayor's office was absolutely quiet and said absolutely nothing. Um, are my senators, um, Ossoff and Warnock, um, were very involved and engaged and wanted to see that this, you know, got cleared up and they were very supportive. Um, however, everyone else, I haven't heard a mumbling word. I ha there's some representatives um, that were uh, supportive in trying to help push, you know, things along because it was taking so long for them to even come back and say that they would um, investigate. Since our initial complaint, we filed probably two or three others because we had a retaliation complaint. Um, we filed complaints, um, retaliation for our daughters. Um, we filed um, retaliation complaints against my husband. They actually had my husband sit out the whole year um, at Gosh. home. He had to work from home while the principal 
still reported to school as if nothing happened um, and said he was um, basically he, you know, was creating a, a hostile work environment, um, which was interesting because when the news broke, my husband wasn't even in the building. He hadn't been in the building for at least over a week um, because we knew that we had filed, we were going to file and he had already spoken um, with his supervisor and let them know. So they knew that he wasn't in the building. So I'm, you know, pressed as to how does he create a, a hostile work environment and he's not there. Right. And, and so, so these complaints are sitting in the bowels of the Department of Education somewhere or, or at uh, DOJ or where are they at this point, you know? They're, correct. So they're at the DOJ um, uh, Department of Ed. Um, they have acknowledged that they have our complaints um, at this time. They have, um, I- I'm assuming, working through all of the nuances. Like I said, it's so many moving parts to all of it because, you know, when we brought this to light, opposed to fixing it, fixing the problem, it, it just, the principal ballooned it into something that it didn't need to be um, and added another level with the retaliation. So <laughs> now um, you, you have a, you, complaint after complaint after complaint because she just kept going um, is with she, it. Is she still, do, she's still doing the segregating kids by race? I, I am not for sure what she's doing because we no longer go to that school. Right. But she, but, but, but it's, after, after you called her out and, and you brought this to public attention, she persisted with this. So after we called her out, um, they did an internal investigation. Um, the like third in command in the district and she did an investigation and she reported back to us that, you know, yes, this is, this was going on. The principal admitted that she was doing it. Um, my understanding is that they requested that the practice stop immediately, um, which, which was great news for us. We were like, okay, they're going to stop it. However, they didn't redistribute the classes. Um, and, and this was a COVID year. There were many moving parts. However, when you, ha- when you know, when you've been made known that they're segregating classes, then you need to go in and you need to create new class lists. Yeah, right. They did not do that. That they did not do that at all. My other uh, understanding was that she was supposed to turn in her class list um, to her superior to check over. Do I know if that happened? I have no idea. Um, not to mention, I mean, just uh, letting all the kids know uh, what happened. That's wrong. That's not what we were. That's not what we're going to do. But obviously, if she's still in charge, you're never going to get that kind of admission or that kind of accountability. You are correct. I would agree. Kyla Posey is the mom who filed a federal discrimination complaint against Maryland Elementary School in Atlanta after learning that her daughter was being segregated by her race in classes, as we were just discussing. Uh, Kyla, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck with the complaints that you have filed. Best of luck with your daughters as well. And, um, you know, thank you for stepping up on this. I know it obviously you described all the turmoil that your family has had to endure, but we need good people to stand up when bad things are happening. And you did. I will continue. Good thank, for you. Thank you, Kyla. You definitely have our support. And she joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories and telling you what they really mean. That show is this one.